You know, we, I had us read from the book of Romans where our relationship with one another, even through our weaknesses and our difficulties, how that we need to tend to one another, to care about one another, to follow the example of Christ who did things for the sake of others. And with that thought in mind today, I'd like to talk about friends and fellowship and its impact that it has on our life. Uh, in this day and also in, in moving forward. And I want to talk about it from Jesus' perspective and when Jesus was talking to his disciples, what he has to, had to say to his disciples and their relationship that they would have with him. This is found in John chapter 15. John writes this to us in John chapter 15, verse 11 through 17. And here's what John tells us here. First of all, he, Jesus is saying, and these are the words of Jesus, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And I am telling you, or giving this sermon today, so that your joy, the joy the, of Jesus in you, might be full and also might be complete. Or at least more than what it was. Because our joy is about not only ourselves, but also about friends and relationships and the fellowship that we have with one another. And we have connectivity with one another through very different ways. We connected with each other because we are all from all over this country, whether it be some from Central America, Carol from Michigan, I'm from Indiana, so we have a closer relationship because we actually know people and, and the area. Jeanette... Washington, you know, I always want to say Louisiana, but it's Washington, D.C. A capital idea indeed, and a place to be. Richard, well, he's from the Caribbean, or Caribbean, huh? And Dave, well, he's as corn-fed as you can get, because he's from the Midwest, and he's from Iowa, and, we, and we've had people from Holland, you know, we've had people from all over. But what connects us, I've got our connections started, we would say the church. The reality is God is what got our connection started in his work in our life. And so we bring to each other a, a connection, a certain bonding for a certain reason. And we have fellowship with one another as a result of that. And we do things for one another. We have over the years, and some of you have known each other. Well, Carol and I have known each other for nearly 50 years. And some of you have known one another also for long years. It's hard to believe I've been pastoring this church for 22 years. Um, long time and uh, the like. But over the time, I've gotten to know you better, and hopefully you've gotten to know me. But most importantly, hopefully you've gotten to know Jesus a whole lot better over those 22 years. And you have to live long enough to make that connection and make that relationship. So he says here, again, that our joy might be c complete. And then he goes on to say, my command is this, that you love each other as I have loved you, greater love has no one than this and he laid out his life for his friends you are my friends if you do what I command I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business instead I've called you my friends for everything that I have learned from my father I have made known to you you did not choose me but I have chose you and I appointed you to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you whatsoever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. So when we think about it, and we think about life itself, our lives are so dramatically changed by the relationship, not only that we have with God, also with we have with one another, and the, the relationship we have with ourselves. Because we have a relationship with ourselves in terms of how we think, you know, and how we perceive ourselves in terms of who we are. So Jesus, in these verses, I believe, instructs his disciples about friendship 
and also about fellowship. Friends and fellowship are central to a Christian's life. Humanity was not made to live in isolation. And other people's lives impact us in incredible, wonderful ways. As I already mentioned to you, I got up this morning and I was enjoying my coffee in the kitchen. I thought, well, I've got time. And then my, my wife comes in at a brisk pace and she says, I'm packing my bags. And you think, well, you know, some people think, because our daughter is getting ready to have our grandson. And I'm headed to San Diego. Now, I say that because you should just see the glow in her face. The joy of anticipation that her daughter is going to have our grandson. And that is going to add to our collection of grandchildren and give us 12. So, but the joy. Now, what is she going to do? Well, she's hustling her way down to San Diego now, hopefully to be there in time before the baby is born so she can be there. But then she's going to be doing housework. She's going to be doing cooking. She's going to be tending to the baby as much as she can, get it out of the mother's arms and all that. You know how that goes. She's going to be working. But she is going to delight in that because her and her daughter have a friendship. Oh, rocky at times, like all parents and the like. But they love one another. And I have seen my wife love my daughter, our daughter, as Jesus has loved her, through thick and thin. I've also seen my friends, and this is what I want to, when we talk about our connection with humanity and others in relationship and how those relationships bring us joy and peace relationships that delight God our Father I remember Mac saying his favorite scripture is how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity Psalms 133 verse 1 and he likens it to the oil that ran down Aaron's beard and that God is pleased when we dwell together in unity. So when you think about dwelling together in unity, who is delighted? How good and pleasant when God sees that? Well, how do we do that? Well, we do that in relationship with one another. And we do that in the unity where, where God is involved. And as we look at how we interact with one another, and we look at two different ways of interacting, both in the time of difficulty. You know, Jesus prophesied there in Matthew 25, in the latter days, because wickedness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That's the one side. On the other side, and I want to read about the other side out of Hebrews chapter 10. When things get difficult, when we have problems and the like, here's what the author of Hebrews tells us that we ought to be doing. This is in Hebrews chapter 10, and I'm going to begin here in verse 19. So we read here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, now we think about confidence we have this confidence because Jesus is our friend and because Jesus invites us to enter into that holy place to come before his throne of grace now my good friend Mike Swaggerty when he comes over he's not hesitant to open my door and yell Smith why are you being so rude to me you're not right here at this door to open this door for me And he's not hesitant to look in the refrigerator if he needs something. But we've been friends for years and years and years and years, and it has gotten better over the years. Feeling the blues today or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life or need spiritual advice? The Worldwide Church of God is located in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto, California. We welcome everyone to attend our worship services with us 
every week at the times listed on your screen.